I'm home at last. My exile has ended. As exiles go, I'd say yours was rather pleasant. Don't you think so? And besides, if your brother hadn't forced you to stay in college, who would have helped me with my French lessons? As soon as I see Rodrigue, I'm going to give him a big kiss of gratitude. You talk to the Count as if he were an old friend. Of course he's an old friend. Emily and I read Rodrigue's letters together. He's a fascinating man. I'm almost in love with him. Emily, did my sister have you read the letters I wrote her? But of course. And we also read between the lines, didn't we? Welcome back, mademoiselle. But who are you? I'm Alastair, the new butler. And where's Joseph? I wouldn't know, mademoiselle. This way, please. I hope your brother isn't put out by our unexpected arrival. Nonsense. He'll love you. Well, I hope so. Because the weather doesn't seem to be of the same opinion. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. When I left the castle, my father was still alive. But weren't you here when your father... No. It was her brother who told her. I've missed you so much. I missed you too, Emily. When you left, you were only a child, and now... I'm a woman. I'm 21 now. And I don't have to answer to anyone for my actions. But I'll always be grateful to you, Audrey. There's still a week to your birthday. And until then, your life belongs to me. Oh, excuse me. My brother, Rodrigue. Me lord. Alice and John Taylor. How do you do, sir? Alice was my closest friend in college. Oh, I know. You were mentioned in every letter. My brother arrived in London to take me back home to New York and... And said Emily convinced us both to come to Brittany. She insisted so much that... I wanted Alice to help me blow out the candles on my birthday cake. Oh, that reminds me. I must tell Dorothy... But... Dorothy is no longer with us. She was very old. She's gone, too. But we have other servants, my dear. Alistair! Dinner will be served soon. Perhaps our guests would like to freshen up a bit. My lord? Accompany Miss and Mr. Taylor to their rooms. We'll see you later. Forgive me. Forgive 
give me the to return home after, after our poor father. There's nothing to forgive, Emma. I understand, my dear. Who is she? Welcome back, mademoiselle. Thank you. Miss Eleanor. Our new housekeeper. Everyone seems to be new here, Rodri. Miss Eleanor deserves our thanks for the way she manages the house. Thank you, my lord. I also hope to gain Miss Emily's trust and confidence very soon. Go now and make yourself beautiful. And remember, you are now the lady of the castle. Accompany my sister to her rooms. I appreciate America very much. But being so young a country, it has a lot to learn. We can always enroll the whole nation in an English college. <laughs> oh no, I've just come out of one. you're mistaken. It was more like the sound of a dog howling. That was probably it. Just a dog. Of course, our peasants have many of them. By tomorrow, you'll be accustomed to the countryside that surrounds this old castle. Oh, I'm being silly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid your sister is very excitable, Mr. Taylor. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening. The Count has been expecting you. You must all be tired from your long journey. It's quite late, and you best get some rest. I'm not at all tired. In college, you were already in bed at this hour.
Goodie. I'm terribly sorry I couldn't make it in time. But your patience prevented you. It seems that for a doctor, a watch is useful only for taking pulses. If you think you're staring at my sister, you're mistaken. I didn't realize I was staring. I immediately recognized you from the description your brother gave me. I'm honored, Mademoiselle. Dr. LaRouche, in only a few months, he has gained all my esteem and trust. Alice and John Taylor. And Dr. Bruchel? The old doctor had taken care of three generations of Dublanchville, but was too old for the fourth. <laughs> Shall we go? I wouldn't forgive myself if the beauty of our lovely Miss Alice were to suffer for lack of breath. Uh, you're making me blush, you know. <laughs> My name is Roderick. Uh, I'll accompany you to your rooms. Wait for me here. I must beat you at chess. Is Ellen? Yes. Thank you, sir. You're very kind. I'd appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind uh, keeping me company. Well, then? Nothing. I'm not sure I like the way you've been behaving. And now his sister's here with those other two. You entered into this and you'll have to find a way out. If you can. Chew. I'm warning you, shall we come in now and see you like this? It will all be over for the two of us. Where is it?
is it? Do you need something? No. That is, up in the tower, I saw... Oh, my God. Will you tell me what you're talking about? I tell you, there was a man. I saw him. He was a monster. And his hands were all covered with blood. He was shouting. I didn't There's no him. one in the tower. Are you sure that it wasn't just your imagination? No. It couldn't have been. I tell you, I really saw him. And he was together with your housekeeper, Miss Eleanor. Eleanor. We can go up together. Are you afraid? No. I'll go. convinced now, Alice? And yet, I'm sure it was in this room. It's just an abandoned room in an old tower, exactly as one would imagine in a dream. Go to your room now and get some rest. It all seems so real, so terrible. The owl. with midnight. It's now midnight. And Emily's father died? Yes. How strange. Was he anything at all like Rodrigue? I wouldn't know. One is surrounded by sadness in these ruins. On the other hand, your brother seems to be enjoying his vacation here. And why not? He's in love with Emily. It's only natural. Emily's very lovely. But she's... She's in the Blanche League. What do you mean? Oh, nothing. 
It's that she belongs to one of the noblest families in Brittany. And I don't think your brother realizes what he would be up against. You mean that a de Blancheville cannot fall in love with... with a John Taylor? Oh, of course, there's no law to prevent, Emily. But there are certain prejudices that exist in these families. And if one is not kin to them, it's advisable to stay away. You're implying that my brother and I should leave the castle? No, I didn't mean it that way. Your presence is refreshing. But come to Blanchefield. Even Rodrigue seems to welcome our presence here. And it's not just a matter of good manners. And I was told as much last night. Are you sure? Yes, quite sure. I love you, Emily. I'm starving. Oh, here in the castle, John, it is said that one is not allowed to be actually starving. At most, we will admit to being of good appetite. Really? Well, I'll admit to it, then you can double it. Doctor, it's urgent. Excuse me. If you wish, tea will be served very shortly in your rooms. Why did you have your sister come back? You could have avoided... I couldn't prevent her. It's her home. If anything happens to her, you'll be responsible. Me? You seem to forget I limited myself to giving professional advice. And nothing else. Instead, you wouldn't allow me to... Are you accusing me? Because I wanted to spare his life. I only hoped that your show of pity will not compromise us both. We must go now. Your guests are waiting for us. Alice. I need your help. Help? I think you know your brother John and I. We continue. You see, well, John and I. You're a pair of doves. <laughs> that obvious. I didn't think you were trying to hide it. You mean even Rodriguez is aware of it then? He has eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Alice. Rodriguez, what's wrong? I don't know what you'll think of me, but I hope you will forgive me for having purposely deceived you last night. Emily, you must prepare yourself for something unpleasant. What is it? 
When I wrote you that our father perished when the old abbey burned down, I lied. You lied? Yes. He's alive. Not dead? Oh, Rodrigue. But why did you let me believe he was dead? Because, because he's so horribly disfigured. the good name of de Blanchefield. I had to. Your father. I actually saw him then. Yes. Try to understand me. Perhaps I shouldn't have done it. Until last night, I was still hoping to be able to hide the truth. But now... You knew it? No. Nothing. I was sleeping when all of a sudden I heard a scream. I looked everywhere for John's room and without realizing it, I found myself in that cell. That woman was there. She wanted to give him an injection. I saw her. She was there torturing him. Nonsense. He wanted to escape. It's true. In fact, he's escaped. And if you hadn't interfered, it wouldn't have happened. I was injecting a sedative prescribed by the doctor. He's right. He fled into the forests. Etienne and his men are already searching for him. Let's hope they find him. He's very dangerous. But he's so old. Besides, he's my father. I'm going into the woods to look for him. He'd never harm me. How come we... Come back here! What you don't realize is that it's you he wants to kill. But he... my own father. Emily, sit down. Your brother has something more to explain. Speak up before it's too late. Carved on the headstone of our family tomb, there is an old prophecy that only a warped and distorted mind could believe in. It says that the house of Dublinspiel will end with this generation if a female descendant reaches the age of 21. Exactly. 21? Your birthday is on the 23rd of October. Which means in exactly five days. The sign of the scorpion on the clock. Precisely. And my father would do anything to carry out this prophecy. And that's why he wants to kill you, Emily. I have always done. I'll watch over you every moment. Did you find him? No. And I searched the forest for miles around. You attend. Tell me, were there any traces? No, my lord. We looked everywhere, but with so few men it would take weeks to cover the whole territory. But we'll organize a bigger search party. Don't worry, my lord. We'll find him. Let's go. Come on.
You must obey me. Abandon your will, Emily. Your destiny is now in my hands. You will follow me, Emily, to your tomb, to your death, to die. when she left the castle. In fact, before the others find out, let's take her back to her room. Have the ladies come down yet? They're in the dining room. Any news? Everything under control. You're not drinking your tea. Oh. oh, John, did you find him? No, not yet. But, but where's Emily? She was always the last one to get up in college. She's probably still sleeping. But yesterday she was already up by this time. Oh. Don't be so impatient. And now sit down and eat your breakfast. We'll be right down, dear.
Sunny, aren't you coming down? John has been asking for you. Emily. Emily. What is it, Emily? Are you all right? You don't feel well? No, I, I don't know. Didn't you sleep last night? Yes, very deeply. Did you have a bad dream? I don't know. There's something I don't, don't recall. Last night, I... Emily, for the love of God, tell me, go on. Last night, you... I... I... You were saying that last night... What did you do last night? Last night? I don't know. I don't know. Your nightgown, your slippers are all covered with mud. You went out last night. No, Alice. No. But it rained last night and you went out. Look, your slippers are all dirty. No, it's not possible. I never went out of my room. I'm sure of it. But think, perhaps that's what you're trying to remember. I don't want to remember anything. I mustn't remember anything. Go away! Oh, forgive me. Forgive me. But I feel so strange. I'll be... I'll be all right in a moment. I'll join you in a few minutes. I wanted. By now you would have been betrayed. How is she? It's nothing serious. She's resting now. Well, I hope you're right. I don't think you realize what Emily means to me. I didn't imagine. And for this reason, I assure you that it's not the case to worry.
two or three days of rest, she'll be carefree and fit as she was before. Is that everything? You have my word. Well, what was it then? Perhaps she is still overwrought. Or she has fallen in love. Yes. That could be it. The American? Nonsense. Within a few days after Emily's birthday, he will have gone away. You can be sure of that. Does Miss Alice stay? And why should she remain? Actually, many doctors are interested in the study of hypnotism. Of course, but if you consider Emily's condition, it's a strange coincidence. You might have told me sooner. I only found out about it this morning. And then, how could I have told you if you were out all day leaving me alone with Rodrigue? You like Rodrigue, don't you? Yes, very much. If you want my opinion, I don't like him, nor this miserable castle. As far as I'm concerned, they can have it. They've gone to bed. It's time you go and get some rest. It's midnight. You'll see Emily will soon be better if we both watch over her. In this gloomy atmosphere, Emily's buoyant, young and jovial. But in this manner, how can you help feeling anything but moody? The servants in this place, the walls, everything here seems morose and deathlike. John, please. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm very worried for Emily. I've got to convince her to come away with me. Good night, Alice. John. You'll see. Everything will be all right. Emily. I was about to go to my room, and she appeared as if in a trance. But as soon as I tried to shake her out of it, she screamed as if awakening from a nightmare. Oh, leave me. Don't touch me. Leave her alone. Have someone call the doctor. I want to get to the bottom of this. No. Emily doesn't need any doctor. And much less one like LaRouche. What have you against Dr. LaRouche? John. Nothing definite. But I'll soon know enough to make a formal accusation. If you have any accusations to make, please do so immediately. Dr. LaRouche is a gentleman, and I have never had any reason to doubt my faith in him. My lord, I am a doctor. I don't see any reason why my interest in magnetism or hypnotism should need any justification. I'm sure that you will admit that Mesmer's book may have aroused a certain curiosity, fantasy, in Miss Alice. My lord, believe. The art of hypnotism is now recognized by many doctors and may one day be a part of medical study. Despite the barriers of an ignorant society. I truly hope you haven't been using my sister Emily as a guinea pig for your experiments. Because if you have been, you'll have wrong. wrong. 
I have no practice whatsoever in hypnotic procedure. But there is no doubt that the girl's state of prostration is a condition that resembles most accurately what is referred to as a hypnotic coma. A hypnotic coma? And what does that mean? It's difficult to talk when you're under accusation. However, I can tell you, what is now afflicting Emily is no passing illness. I assure you that it's something much more undefinable, affecting not only your body, but threatening inexorably to kill a spirit. This is all very vague. Exactly. What you have yet to explain to us, Doctor, is Emily's helplessness and her transformation. In only a few hours, she's become a useless creature. Deprived of any will to live. That's exactly it. Deprived of her own faculties. Emily seems to be the victim of a slow and ever-progressive case of poisoning. Of poisoning? Yes. It's not her body that is threatened. It's her spirit. Then what would you say was the best cure for her? I wouldn't leave her alone. And that's the reason. I insisted she stay outdoors as much as possible. I know of no other cure that could help her. You're of the same opinion, Mr. Taylor? Yes, of course. But... She's coming down now. I think that I've been quit. Oh, don't. I could have easily satisfied your curiosity personally if you'd asked me information about my book. But... It's all I... been cleared up, Alice. There's only one really effective cure for Emily. And that is to free her from the nightmare of her insane father. Quiet, she's coming. How are you, dear? Much better. Would you like to walk outside in the garden for a while? Yes. Don't go too far. Aren't you coming? No, I'm afraid I've neglected my business these days. And I must take advantage of this moment. With your permission, I'll accompany you. If it pleases you. Very much. Over there! Emily! Emily! There! In the tower! That's where I saw someone move. It must be the old cop. It couldn't be my father. That's absurd. If there is anyone, Rodrigo managed to find him. I doubt it. I'd say it was an accident. Probably a loose block. But it wouldn't fall down unless there was something that... or someone who... The castle is very old. Still, it seemed to me there was a shadow moving about. Where's Alice, dear? John? I sent him to make a purchase. Do you need anything? No. Thank you. Nothing. There's no one. I went all the way to the top, but I couldn't find a trace. I thought so. You're out of danger now. Isn't that so, my lord? There's no danger. Would you like to continue your walk or go back indoors? No. I feel safe being here, John. As you wish. Miss Eleanor, would you come with me a moment, please? We will have to repair this. A 
as soon as you're well again, you'll come with us to America. It would be wonderful. I can promise you that. But Roderick would never consent to my leaving. Tomorrow is your birthday. And there won't be any need for his consent. And if you are in love with me. Oh, John. Do you doubt? I'm sure that if we could have met under different circumstances, you would now have another opinion of me. But why do you think so? Because you're... You're a woman who's very easily influenced by outward appearances. You mean that I'm superficial? The opposite. If you have a fault, I'd say it's something to the contrary. A hypersensitivity. Obviously, Count Rodrigue has made quite an impression. I didn't know I had to reveal my impressions. I maintain, however, that Rodrigue is a gentleman as there are very few. Of course. I know that you don't include me in those few. And yet I would do anything to have you change your opinion. I didn't say that you... Please don't. You don't have to explain. It's quite clear. You're in love with him and I with you. While on the other hand, he loves another. Another? Oh, no. It was just... Please don't misunderstand me. There exists no one else. I carried out your orders, Miss Eleanor. Open! Open, hurry! She's only fainted. Carry her up to her room. Alistair? Did you want something, Miss Alice? When did you come back? Come back, Miss Alice? Didn't you go into town on some errands? Ah, yes. I went to purchase some medicines for Miss Eleanor. For Miss Eleanor? For Mademoiselle Emily, I was sent by Miss Eleanor. Perhaps a doctor can tell you, Miss Alice, if it was he who prescribed the medicines. I? Oh, yes, it Dr. LaRouche, I'm sure, better than anyone else, could inform you on in all matters concerning this castle. Do you wish anything else, Miss Alice? Rodrigue. Emily. She shouldn't have gone out. You forget she was frightened. She needs rest. Alice, could you stay with her until she's fallen asleep? No. It's 
not the walk that made her worse. The cause must lie somewhere else. She's terrorized. Emily lives in the fear that someone is going to kill her. If they haven't found the old count as yet, I'll find him. I'll find him even if it takes the rest of my life. medicine. Drink it. Drink it, I said. No. What, what do you mean that glass? Let go. Let go, I said. Give you want mad? Said. No. What's going on? Emily screamed. She was poisoning her. What are you talking about? What's in that glass? Why don't you answer? Then why don't you give it to her? Ten drops.
Rodrigue asked you to come here, Dorte. Thank you. Thank you. 
Lord. Lord. What is it? It's the American. He's been badly wounded. Lord our God is merciful and just. Lendeth our dear departed, O Lord, thy perpetual light. The righteous shall be remembered in eternity and shall not come to suffer infamy. The Lord hath done good things. Creator and Redeemer of all the faithful, concede unto thy servants the remission of sin. I'm not dead. I'm not dead, Roderick. Right. Why can't I open my eyes? Why can't they hear me? I must move my hands. My hands, they'll see. They'll know I'm not dead. If only I could speak. If only I could shout. I'm alive! I'm alive! Our hearts to weep. Forever, amen. here. Don't leave me alone. Where am I? I do want to stay here, Roderick. Save me. Save me, Roderick. I'm alive. I'm alive. 
There's someone near me. Take me away. Take me away. I'm alive. Don't you hear me? I'm alive. I'm alive. I don't want to stay here. You can't leave me here. Take me away. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I'm alive. I'm alive. Oh, don't abandon me. I beg of you. Please. Please don't leave me. I beg of you. I'm afraid. Don't leave me. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I have no reason to suspect me, believe me. Because I also want to take revenge for Emily's death. What? Yes. I'm certain that she was killed. The same person also attempted to murder your brother. John knew that Emily had left the castle last night. But Emily died in her room. In her bed. No. Emily was led to this abbey almost every night. Every night? But then, you mean you knew it didn't say anything? And yet, by not saying anything, I was hoping to make the murderer fall into my hands. Emily should never have returned to the castle. For a curse has befallen the house of the Bronsfield. And the first victim of this mystery was Dr. Brochel, my predecessor. And close friend. It was he who looked after the old count who was horribly burned when the abbey got fire. Before dying, he said, I will never leave this castle alive. But he was killed. I'm sure of it. Rochel was killed because he knew the old count wasn't insane. And he never agreed with Rodrigue's supposition. Then you think that... When the doctor died, I took over. And you arrived with Emily. I had to act quickly. But I was allowed to see the old lord only on rare occasions. Never alone. But I convinced Rodrigue to engage the help of a nurse. A woman in whom I had absolute faith. Miss Eleanor. Yes. But unfortunately, she too is under his hypnotic spell. I will never believe that. Wait here.
God have mercy. Murdered. He's been there two or three days. Well then, Emily and John. I know, Alice. You wait here. I must return to the castle. <gasps> now, wait here. There's no reason why he should die. Believe me, it isn't necessary that he be killed. He doesn't know you. He knows, he knows, and he will die. He's a Lannister and he knows, I tell you. And now he'll die, he'll die. The knife! No! You will not kill again! Get back! Get back, I tell you! Don't die too! useless creature compared to the life the future of the dead blinds feel <laughs> you're mad you're out of your mind even if you do kill me you'll never escape punishment Bloody! the deception is over and now get back there's no one to save you you can no longer accuse your father of the crimes that you've committed you're a murderer Possibly be. Come back, Roderick. But you're dead. No, Roderick. It was you. I know. Go away. Wait, wait. Go away.
And when is the wedding? I'll let Emily decide. What do you think would happen if I asked them the same thing? He was about to ask me, but he forgot. I'm still waiting. Well, if that's a proposal, the answer is yes. <laughs> 